please remember to leave a like, a comment, share the video about, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you. Well, isn't this just fantastic? Captain's Log, subdates 23082.7. We're two days away from heading to the glorious city of Norwich for Trivium, and I need to decide now if I'm going to be throwing Dave Bay into the crowd to surf, or simply getting pissed and launching myself for shiggles and science. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video, a reduced video, a stripped back video owing to me having to go away in a couple days and not having enough time to make the fully edited versions I usually go with, sorry about that. Today we're going to talk about Colleen Ballinger, Miranda Sings. Continuing on from where we last spoke about her on the 16th of July. This should afford us an opportunity to catch up with things that have happened since and speak about other subjects that are relevant that we didn't address before because this information wasn't widely known. A lot of which came to light courtesy of the YouTuber Swoop, who went ham on everything, got all the details, all the information, and brought it to light. This includes interviews with the likes of Colleen Ballinger's ex-husband. Because let's not forget here, Colleen emotionally dumped her failed marriage onto others that were minors while also talking sexually with them. Yeah, it, it got really inappropriate. If you need a catch-up on any of that, all the videos I have done are in the pinned comment down below. On the 17th of July, Vangelina Skov on Twitter had tweeted, or X, my unlisted video has been copyright claimed allegedly on behalf of Miranda Sings. The clip being used is both transformative and being used for commentary purposes. Included is an image, which is an email that she had received. A copyright owner using content ideas claimed some material in your video. Claimed by Awesomeness TV. How cringe. Vangelina though did underneath put, can't imagine why she might want to claim a video of her calling a Native American her pet. Dustin Daly did offer some clarity by pointing out Awesomeness TV is a company Trisha Paytas used to use. They always violate fair use. There are a few companies like that on social media. I'm not overly fond of them. Shortly after this completely pointless copyright claim, Vanity Fair had published an article where the lawyer for Colleen Ballinger had addressed some of the accusations, right? It wasn't very good and he essentially defamed Adam McIntyre. I'm going to play a clip from Rich Lux that adequately conveys that. Allegations against Ballinger getting similarly ushered into the mainstream press. A few days ago, the Rolling Stone piece went live. HuffPost published its own investigation report. Her fans say she groomed them as teen. In the ensuing weeks, Ballinger would be accused of everything from performing a Beyonce song in blackface, as Miranda sings, to texting a sex worker's nude photo to a minor. Ballinger's legal team has denied she performed in blackface, saying she was wearing green green face paint for a prior cover of a song from Wicked. Her Sings tour has since been cancelled. Her career abruptly stalled when reached out for comment. Ballinger's lawyer responded in an email that Vanity Fair inquires were simply a regurgitation of the baseless and unsubstantiated claims that other media outlets and individuals on social media have reported previously. Adam McIntyre responded. Here's what you have to say. The article is laughable. The journalist is working closely with Colleen Ballinger's lawyer and the journalist is on the record lying about information about me that is proven I told the truth about. They quote things against me that I have shown video proof of and text proof journalism moment. And of course, the Vanity Fair article says this. It says, one can look at the devolution of the Miranda Sings empire and see that the longer it drags out, the harder it is to pin down the exact truth. Swoop on Twitter responded to this by retweeting Adam McIntyre. Just want to take a moment and lift up Adam McIntyre who has been steadfast in sharing his story, which he never had to, with openness and vulnerability. For a publication to ignore that and not even reach out for comment is just sad. Good to see the community pulled together. The image Adam McIntyre had tweeted was the Vanity Fair tweet of the article itself. Readers added context. Colleen Ballinger's inappropriate sexual and offensive behaviour is in her content and live shows. Adam McIntyre's claims have been verified by witnesses. Other people have come forward with their experiences with her. The evidence intensified because of her response song. If you don't know the song, it's The Toxic Gossip Train. It wasn't a very good song, although I will give her a small modicum of credit. 
she knows how to play ukulele. That's all the credit she gets, because that's just the musical part, not the lyrical part. Yes, although the lyrical part was semi-musical as well. Don't be pedantic. Get over yourselves. Focus on the points. Thank you. Now, as far as any kind of timeline goes, we skip ahead a month to about a week ago. And at this point, on both the Miranda Sings and Colleen Vlogs channels, there has been no content. But it is amusing to me that the Toxic Gossip Train video is still up, and it has 14 million views. 1.9 million downvotes and 142,000 upvotes, which is quite generous, yes. With one of the more recent comments that tickled me to no end, you have helped me through so, so much. Ignore everybody else and listen to me. You are amazing. And if some things were pulled from your past that were said wrong, who cares? You have done more good than anybody I have ever met in my whole life. If all of the top comments are mean, I hope that you find just this one, and you get off your device knowing that you are an amazing human, that so many humans love and adore so much. I hope that one day when you are more comfortable, that you will continue to make YouTube videos because they help me so much. I'm so glad you made this video, I love you. Get help. On the 17th of August 2023, Swoop put out a video titled The Devil in Colleen Ballinger's Shadow. He lied to everyone. Downfall. In the comments to that, Joshua DTV wrote, My admiration for you extends well beyond this moment and this situation. You've given me back a significant portion of my life. I was, that word I can't say, and became a laughing stock to thousands. You took my grief seriously and guided me in ways that I'm still processing. Swoop's video is almost four hours long. In that, she interviewed Joshua Evans. The interview itself, according to Swoop on Twitter, went for seven hours, with every question that could be conceived being asked. Earlier in that video, she speaks about Johnny Silvestri. Johnny Silvestri can charitably be considered a crisis actor in this. Somebody who falsified evidence while simultaneously making allegations of inappropriateness, participating in the very thing accusing people like Colleen of. Johnny Silvestri is such a shitty individual, he has participated in what can be called revenge porn. Taking Trisha Paytas' own content from OnlyFans, downloading it and sharing it with others. Those others happen to be minors. This same cretin was calling Joshua David Evans a groomer with no evidence. And depending on who Johnny was talking to, he changed his story to make it even more convoluted, complicated, murky, grey. With Swoop's video dropping, Joshua put out a statement on Twitter saying, Lily and Jesse, you treat me like garbage even after I pleaded privately, publicly for you to at least consider giving me a voice. I tried for days. You rolled your eyes and didn't do your homework. You didn't care how his words would impact my life. You wanted the tea and the clicks, that's it. Your attitude was disrespectful and reckless. Your channel and intentions are literally the polar opposite of Swoop and her team. You are a prime example of why people in my shoes rarely speak up or get justice. Hope you enjoyed the money your ridiculous videos made you before you removed them. Also, I saw your statement. Funny how my name wasn't in there at all. Shame on you both. Reply, are we going to call it H32 or just these two? I am sure a statement is coming, but Jesse is in the middle of the ocean. And everyone believed what Johnny said until Swoop's doc came out, which is unfortunate, but it happened. Reply, H3 didn't roll their eyes at Joshua or refuse to hear his side. Joshua, I'd actually love it if Ethan and his crew made at least a statement correcting this ongoing narrative. My DMs and emails are open if they are interested. Later retweeting this with, a simple statement would be more than enough from the H3 podcast. I'm not looking for anyone to roll out the red carpet for me. I just hope people will take Johnny's smear campaign against me seriously enough to care about how his false claims could damage my life and employment. Reply from Olivia. Please check your Instagram DMs. Olivia, I believe, does work for the H3 podcast. I do think in the context of what Johnny did and how H3 has not helped this, Ethan or Healer both need to actually be the ones to address this directly. They are, after all, the face of this and the false allegations from Johnny are quite defamatory, inflammatory. In a legal sense, they are quite volatile and could get him into a mountain of trouble. But as is often the case on social media, when people make these accusations of grooming especially, they do it because they want to poison the well as much as possible to go to the extreme of damage done to a person's livelihood, family, friends, their entire existence. And it is a form of poisoning the well. It is done by the weak-minded because they're not clever enough to simply tackle an issue 
with any level of intellectual honesty. Motives are typically within the ballpark of bad faith, solely for clicks and for extra money. I should perhaps give a little context because I haven't mentioned Johnny Silvestri in any previous videos. Johnny Silvestri has quite a small channel on YouTube. Rose to Notoriety with a video titled There's More to the Story My Experience with Colleen Ballinger and then putting out a video titled Let's Talk About Joshua David Evans reacting to the toxic gossip train and Dear Trisha and Colleen. These videos all did exceedingly well for a very small channel but in all that content there are lies. Johnny Silvestri has done interviews and told more lies. The damage done and potential harm to future for Joshua David Evans even from a channel of this size can be quite extreme and it doesn't matter how big or small your channel is really your voice is just as important as anyone else's but when you intentionally go out of your way to peddle lies whilst simultaneously partaking in the very things you accuse others of partaking in while also breaking a whole number of laws concerning revenge porn one does have to wonder what on earth is going through your pea-sized brain. Now somebody had subtweeted Joshua's statement by saying first of all it's reckless, second while I'm glad Swoop gave Josh the vindication he deserves in regards to his relationship with Johnny, he not only participated in inappropriate behaviour by his own admission but he's now usurping the conversation to make it about himself. Retweeted by Xyli, he got called a groomer with no evidence at all by a man who keeps changing his story depending on who he talks to, doctored evidence and couldn't give a straight answer to save his damn life. I don't understand how he is usurping the conversation. For the Johnny bit, I think he has every right to tweet how he feels. Like, what? Will it be usurping the conversation when Swoop comes out with the interview with him? Come on, ma'am. Multiple things, people, stories can be wrong at the exact same time about the exact same subject. Also, not everything has to be straight up one person, one line one timeline. There are multiple stories going on at the same time. No one story is more important than the other because all involved have been affected differently. That is not to scale it and say one is more severe than the other. This narrow-mindedness is astonishing and the false equivalence involved is also dishonest. The person who tweeted that did eventually delete it but did also go on to say, honestly, if I read this from someone else I would be as frustrated with me as y'all are. At first I was thinking they're misconstruing what I'm saying but you're not. This was a garbage take from me, period. When the first wave of the Colleen situation happened, I made it clear that the victims have the right to speak on it as long and as loudly as they want it. This take was hypocritical, which I will admit is a very fair assessment and humbling, something rarely seen on social media these days. I do want to make one last point. There are many different facets to this and some of it requires a lot more information which is why I'll link Swoop's videos down below. If you have many hours available I highly recommend for the sake of context you watch them. If you have inserted yourself into a conversation and in doing so have done so to make it seem like you are either more important than you really are to the story, spin a narrative where you are even greater a victim than you claim to be, to throw others under the bus under the guise of, well they're clearly much worse than anyone else. Poisoning the well essentially, using bad faith and gaslighting as suitable tactics to drive a non-existent point home that you have fabricated. You are a shit person, 100%. Additionally, if you have no leg to stand on because you yourself have partaken in the very things you accuse others of doing, while your point could have some validity, since it's also a lie anyway, you are even shittier and you have broken laws in the process. Trisha Paytas deserves to be heard as well by the way and she has actually put out a video replying to Swoop talking about this. Her content was made for adults. Why was it shared to children? 